Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy homecoming week. This is a big week at Bowling Green. It's nice to see everybody out here. My name is Drew Forehand. I'm the chair of the Bowling Green Board of Trustees. It's my pleasure to welcome you and those joining virtually via live stream, including those at BGSU Firelands for the 2023 State of the University Address. I'd like to uh, welcome and recognize the special guests, um, Representative Gambari. <clears throat> Mi Michaela Ross, our graduate student trustee. And Cole Nemeth, our undergraduate student representative. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank our jazz group, which is William McIntosh and Jaron White from the College of Music. Thank you. I'd also like to remind everybody that following this uh, session, that we'll have a, uh, on, at the Bowen Thompson Student Union, a uh, luncheon, which is, uh, I think the rain is cleared. Everyone agree? Rain's gone, so we, we, uh, I'd invite you to join us out there afterwards. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it's an honor to be here today with our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends to discuss our progress, of which there's been much, and the future of the university. Thank you for all the work that you do to create public good. As we continue to move our university forward, I would like to introduce Rodney Rogers, our 12th president of Bowling Green State University, for his remarks. Thank you, Chair Forehand, and, and I thank you for your leadership and uh, your leadership of our alma mater, so many of our alma mater, and, and I want to thank all of our trustees for their support and guidance over these years. You know, a comprehensive university absolutely requires all of us working together. So the reason I love that video is because it shows how it takes all of us. Um, and so I'd like to start out this morning by a simple thank you. Thank you for our staff, our classified, our administrative staff, our faculty, 
our community leaders and supporters for all that you do each and every day to allow us to do this important work that we do together. You know, as I made my way here today, I'm reminded of, uh, of um, an alum who told me this story. They were a young man who grew up in a, a very small family farm, first in their family to attend college. They came to Bowling Green, actually on an athletic scholarship. However, he, he was injured early in his career, and um, in his uh, athletic career, if you will, and uh, couldn't uh, play football. And he was devastated because the only way he would be able to earn a college degree is if he had that scholarship. So he went to the coach and the coach told him, we're going to find a way. We're going to find a way to keep your scholarship. And he did. And uh, that coach went, did that extra step, that extra mile, took that extra mile with that student. And that student became very involved in campus. Um, met his wife here, actually. Uh, went out, earned his degree, and, and they began their life together. And, and in many ways, that story illustrates one of the most important foundations of Bowling Green State University. Students come to us with the dream of a better life. Many times with, when, when plans they do sometimes change, but we provide them an opportunity uh, and an environment of support going the extra mile, if you will, to find a way forward so that they can be successful at BG and go on to make a difference in the world. Make it a little bit better, if you will. It's why we do what we do, isn't it? So over the past five years, uh, actually this is the third time I've had the honor of delivering a state of our university address. You know, back in 2018, we discussed the importance of being a 21st century public university. We were reminded of the importance of honoring our past, but looking to our future. We owe it to those who have come before us and to those who are yet to come. In 2019, we discussed the importance of dreaming even bigger. We ask ourselves, what if, what if we were to redefine what a public university can be should be, should do in the 21st century? What if we expected more of ourselves just as we expect more of our students? Well, that was 2018, 2019, nearly four years ago. And a lot has changed since then. We have faced challenges, challenges that perhaps we would have never imagined. Uh, so today, in this third state of our university address, um, I'd like to focus on our why, okay, on our why. Um, the state of our university is not defined by any one person. It is defined by each one of us together. So you will not hear individual names called out today but instead, a collective recognition of our success. What you contribute, each of you, is likely different, perhaps, from the person sitting next to you. But what connects us and what, we will, what will continue to move us forward is our why. And so, as we reflect on the recent past, there were certainly people who doubted us. They said a residential university couldn't possibly, couldn't possibly stay open during a global pandemic. There were credit, critics, and uh, certainly we remember the critics. There were many questions, you know, and we knew we didn't have all the answers. You know, why? Why would we even try? Why? Well, I'll say because we believed education was essential. We embraced a growth mindset and said, you know, we're going to learn our way through this. And it took all of us, ITS, campus operations, student life, dining, housing, faculty and staff, everyone stepped up to ensure we remained open. We all doubled down on our commitment to our students and our mission as a public university for the public good. You know, we were in the middle of developing and expanding programs like nursing, resort and attraction management, and aviation. Why wouldn't we just put a pause on these activities? Why? 
because these were academic programs that our communities and society needed. We created a school of nursing. We grew our school of aviation. We reimagined our longtime applied engineering programs, and we challenged ourselves to grow our Firelands Pathway program. You know, we were in the middle of conducting important research, creative and outreach activities. Uh, but why, why couldn't it just wait until things maybe calmed down a little bit? Why? Because what we do, the work we do, shapes our society and provides valuable experiences for our undergraduate and graduate students. Our work in water quality, photochemical science, educational practices, psychology, population science, creative works and performances all added to the knowledge and enriched our communities. We were in the middle of a comprehensive campaign to raise funds to support Bowling Green State University. Why would we continue to ask for support with so much uncertainty in the world? Why? Well, it's because our donors and supporters were unwavering in their belief in the opportunities that Bowling Green provides. We broke fundraising record after record. We completed our Changing Lives for the World campaign, raising more than a quarter of a billion dollars in philanthropic support, surpassing our goal by more than $55 million. And not only did our alumni give, but we received gifts from faculty, staff, students, families, and the community, demonstrating your belief in our university, and I thank you. In 2020, the university named its first college, the Allen W. and Carol M. Schmidhorst College of Business. In 21, we received the largest gift in our history from Bob and Ellen Thompson to support student scholarships. In 22, with the foundational support of donors, we launched a program to empower our students to design their college experience and prepare them for their career and life with two endowed centers with the generous support of trustee Jeff Radbill and former foundation board chair, Mike Colleen. Thank you, Mike. You know, we were in the middle of implementing a campus master plan 1.0. Why not hold off at least for a while and, and maybe see what happens? Why? Why didn't we hold off? Because our physical spaces enhance the academic experience. We opened the Robert W. and Patricia A. Maurer Center and Kokosing Hall, home of the School of Built Environment. We expanded the BG Flight Center, renovated Central Hall for the School of Nursing, opened the home of the Resort and Attraction Management Program in downtown Sandusky, <clears throat> and we brought back the gateway to our main campus, Alumni Gateway. And every one of those projects had support from our donors, partners, and every project makes our university stronger. You know, our athletic teams and performing arts, arts groups were having great success. But why would we even have attempted to keep on going and performing and competing? Why? Because, you know, we are a comprehensive university, not only for our students, <clears throat> but also for our communities, driving economic and cultural vitality. Our volleyball and soccer teams won multiple MAC championships and competed in NCAA tournaments over these past four years. Our sporting and arts programs attracted tens of thousands of people outside uh, the state and outside Bowling Green to our campus. And I'm not sure I will ever forget just how loud the Stroh Center got during the WNIT women's basketball run. My phone was, or my, my watch was constantly going off, reminding me it was too loud in the, in the stro. I don't know if any of you had that issue, but I did. Or the thousands of people that returned to the 100th anniversary of our homecoming. And I want to just end, uh, just to remind everybody that, that the impact that we have is, is beyond just our two campuses. A recent external study calculated that Bowling Green State University created a $3.1 billion economic impact in Ohio 
in a single year. A $3.1 billion impact this university between our two campuses. You know, during this time, these last years, we were also challenged with social issues and tragedy. And why not just ignore these hard topics? You know, why, why not maybe focus on other things? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you why. Because we need to lead in these important conversations. And so we planned and hosted a Title IX Summit, the Day of Dialogue, the Beyond the Dream series. We honored our history with the dedication of the Robert L. Perry Veranda, and we introduced the university's first ever diversity and belonging comprehensive plan. And when tragedy occurred off campus with one of our students, we stepped up and led statewide efforts in the work to eradicate hazing hosting the first ever Ohio Anti-Hazing Summit and creating a culture of reporting and accountability on our campuses. You know, it is a pervasive issue in higher education. And it might be easy for some in higher ed to look the other way, not us. And I am proud that we have not and will not shy away from our shared commitment to investigate any allegations that threaten safety, even if it might impact a high-profile program. We will do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing. You know, during a time that I believe history will show as one that undervalued and underinvested in education, we forged forward together. It's great alliteration, isn't it? We forged forward together. Forged forward together. Working together. It was hard work. Why? The answer is simple. Because our work matters. Our research, discovery, our economic impact, our partnerships, our dialogue, our academic programs, and the opportunities we provide our students absolutely matter. We fundamentally could not have sat this out. We needed to be present and to forge forward. And I know it wasn't always easy. Hard days turned into weeks, months, even years. I thank you for your commitment to moving our university forward. You proved the doubters wrong. Not only did we make it, but we took risks. We became more focused and we thrived. Why? Why? Because higher education BGSU is absolutely an essential good, a public good. So here we are today. And this fall, we welcomed one of our largest and the most academically prepared classes in our history. Our student retention rates are the highest they have ever been in our university's 113-year history. Out-of-state enrollment is up 12%. International enrollment is up 6%. BGSU Firelands up 20% in new students, its largest freshman class in more than a decade. The Honors College enrollment is up. Uh, the number of top scholars attending BGSU up 20%. School of Nursing up 13%. Aviation up 43%. Great news indeed. Thank you to all of you who have worked each and every day to recruit this great class and to support the students of Bowling Green. Would you give yourself a round of applause for that? I think it needs to be more robust than that, don't you? I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. There's not many universities in Ohio that can make these claims. You are making that happen. You are making that happen. And this week, you know, we are celebrating homecoming and the 100th anniversary of the BGSU bands. And this weekend, we will hold the ribbon cutting of the Mitchell B. McLeod Hall in recognition of a nearly $6 million gift to support capital projects from BGSU alumni and Falcon Flames, Julie and Mitch. McLeod. What we are doing, what you are doing is working. So thank you. Thank you. 
we have certainly made great progress, but, and there always is a but, but, but as we ask ourselves, what will BGSU look like in five years? What will higher education look like in five years? What, I believe we will need to lean in, learn in even more than we have in the past to this growth mindset and we will need to do that together. So what we have done and what we need to do. Marcus Aurelius wrote, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. You know, an early version of this speech, somebody said, you don't have uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius quoted, and they were shocked. So I had to work it in somewhere, okay? <laughs> so I put it in right there. Because our action certainly Th those impediments need to advance our action. You know, and we will face more obstacles. And you might be thinking, we've already faced all sorts of obstacles, but we're going to face some more together. And, and we could wait and sit it out, or we could find a way around it, through it, over it. The obstacle needs to inform our path, in my opinion. We absolutely have found the, have found the way, but there are more obstacles to come. We are quickly approaching the demographic cliff of a decreasing number of high school graduates, graduates. And we're meeting it in an especially challenging time for higher education across our country and our state. According to the recent Gallup poll, confidence in higher education has never been lower. This year, falling to just 36% of Americans who are confident in what we do. In 2015, less than 10 years ago, it was 57%. We are facing a cliff there as well. And while Governor DeWine and Chancellor Gardner and other state officials like Representative Haraz Gambari have absolutely been supportive of higher education, some of our state lawmakers have not we will almost certainly see further legislation and court rulings that shape our communities. These will not be easy months, even years ahead. The rhetoric, the rhetoric is getting louder. They continue to say, what is the value of higher education? What is the value of Bowling Green State University? They will continue to ask why. And we must continue to answer. 
Certainly, new challenges call for new solutions, but we will hold on to our core mission, hold on to what we have always been, which is a public university for the public good. You know, after all, we were founded in 1910 and, and we've weathered a storm or two. Uh, the Great Depression, World Wars, the Civil Rights Movement, uh, two pandemics. Um, but we can learn our way through this moment in our history too. So let us not be confined by limitations we place on ourselves or become so distracted by the challenges and noise that we focus on the wrong things or fail to see the opportunity to improve. You know, there, there are probably reasons for declining confidence in higher education. We could do things better. In fact, we should do things better. So let us listen and be open to what we hear, we must embrace a growth mindset. You know, as President Abraham Lincoln, an actual president, right, uh, said uh, during the time of a great divide in our country, the occasion is piled high with difficulty. And we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew. If we are to reverse the declining perception of higher education, we must work relentlessly to redefine student success. Always student first. Always developing our students' ability to be resilient, to think critically and, and, and creatively, and to understand the importance of participating in our democracy. To vote. It starts with voting. And we are going to look to make sure we have quality academic programs that are strong and sustainable to meet society's need. And we will continue with a laser-like focus on outcomes. We've achieved um, amazing outcomes on retention rates and graduation rates, but we need to do even more. We're going to embrace a comprehensive student experience, and we will champion this with our new division of student engagement and success, aligning all of our efforts from the residence hall, student support, campus activities to maximize the student experience. We must ensure that each and every student has been empowered to leverage all of the amazing opportunities that Bowling Green provides, differentiating our university by continuing to grow our life design program, supporting a holistic approach to student success in career and life. We absolutely have to do both, prepare students for both career and for their life. And honestly, there is no better place to do that than Bowling Green. Why? Because this month, the Wall Street Journal ranked Bowling Green State University the number one university, public or private, the number one university, public or private, in Ohio for our student experience, and a top five public university in the entire United States for our learning community and our learning environment. That is a student-focused university. Number one in Ohio, top five public in the entire United States. That is because of your work. That is because of your commitment. But we also, we've got to broaden access, and, and we will make a BGSU degree more accessible through partnerships, pathways, and innovative programming, and teaching delivery methods. For example, our Doctor of Physical Therapy program is absolutely breaking the mold and is now the largest and most diverse in terms of student population of a DPT program in the entire Midwest. Our online alternative residence educator uh, graduate certificate is a competency-driven program that is being offered to fill the immediate need for licensed teachers for our state. You know, we need to continue to reimagine and reinvent what we do to meet our students and society's evolving needs. Our research and creative activities, partnerships and engagement, we must be focused on the public good. 
We're an anchor uh, in this region. We are an anchor institution in our region. And our research and creative activities must support the vitality of our communities and demonstrate the relevance and importance of research and the relevance and importance of rational inquiry to improve the human condition. That is what our work needs to do each and every day. But we also are reminded that we are a university made of people, and it is us. We must continue to lead with a people-centric mindset, and thus we will support mental and physical health, expanding the work of the Division of Community Well-Being. We will focus with intentionality on a culture of inclusion and belonging for each member of our community. We are absolutely in a strong position, very strong position, thanks in part to successful long-term strategic planning. Sounds like an administrator, doesn't it? Uh, successful long-term strategic planning, but it is so true. We have worked the plan, including our current strategic plan forward. And so as we look ahead, we will need to focus on efficiency and effectiveness. We will need to be more efficient. But it is not to fill a budget deficit like so many of our peer institutions, but it is to give us the resources to fund a continued growth mindset and our future as we face the very heavy headwinds of in, in the enrollment cliff and the public debate about the future of higher education. We're going to need to reduce the net cost of a BGSU degree by streamlining our curriculum and thinking about academic affordability initiatives. This will certainly uh, help us minimize student debt in the future, something that we have been criticized about, so we must work on that. You know, and we will need to think about what we can do together not what stands in the way. The obstacle becomes a way. We must, try not, uh, we must try new ways of doing things to meet this moment. And I, I recognize that budgets are limited. Um, some ideas need extra support, and that is why I'm pleased to announce today uh, additional funding, specifically for our faculty and staff to support innovation. This year, because of the generosity of Tom Shanklin, we are launching the Shanklin Innovation Fund. Uh, faculty and staff can apply for one-time funding to pilot and test ideas at BGSU that are aligned with our strategic plan that you believe will make our university stronger, will make our university better. So how will we do this? Well, I, I would just let us remember to always be curious, asking questions, being open to different perspectives and ideas, but we must also be bold, willing to take risks and act. It is action, after all, that moves us forward. And we must also be kind. We must respect one another. Let us prove that it is possible in today's world to be curious, bold, and kind. You know, as I mentioned earlier, that young man from a small family farm came to Bowling Green State University, achieved his degree because of a scholarship. Scholarships are probably the greatest differentiator that opens the door of opportunity uh, for opportunity for and, and access to a college degree for thousands and thousands of our students. We must do our work right and well for our supporters to continue to believe in us, to continue to support our students. You know, that responsibility is very, very great. And so, when uh, those critics or those outside of Bowling Green ask why, why did we continue to move forward during that pandemic? Why did we continue to do the work we do? 
um, I think I can show you. So if I could ask students that are with us today that have received a scholarship, would you please stand? So these students, these students uh, represent, uh, still stand, I'm going to make you stand. I mean, you've been sitting long enough, right? So, um, but these students, uh, I just, I want you to look at these students and remember that these students are the future leaders of, of our society. These students uh, all have big dreams about what they're going to do when they graduate from Bowling Green. And so many of these students in particular represent more than the thousand students that are currently at Bowling Green that are Thompson Scholars or members of the Sidney A. Rabot President's Leadership Academy. You know, these Thompson Working Family Scholarship, I just remind everybody, it covers almost the full amount of tuition at Bowling Green State University for students with financial need. And these students graduate from Bowling Green with minimal debt. They're certainly ready to launch into career and life. These are our future leaders. Thank you for taking time to be here today and listen to all these words up here. But know that community that's behind you are supporting you, dreaming with you, dreaming big about what you're going to be able to do when you graduate from this institution. Thank you so much for being here. You're first in line for the picnic afterwards, okay? So please have a seat. <clears throat> So, uh, as you may have guessed, uh, that first generation student from that small family farm was Robert Thompson, who went on to graduate from Bowling Green State University in 1955. He met his wife, Ellen Bowen, here, who graduated in 1954. You know, after Bob's service to our country as a pilot in the United States Air Force, he and Ellen uh, started a family and had a successful entrepreneurial journey. They're always remembering, though, the opportunity that they had here. That coach who went the extra mile, the Thompsons, and we are in the Bowen Thompson Student Union, the Thompsons have absolutely paid it forward through their generosity to this institution, but most to their generosity to this scholarship program that's focused on students from working families, those with military service, and the students in the Sidney A. Rabot President's Leadership Academy. To date, 2,444 students at Bowling Green State University have received Thompson Scholarship support. And this fall, we will share exciting transformational news for Bowling Green State University and our students. Today, though I can um, share um, with you that the Thompsons have expressed their intent to significantly expand and extend the impact of this scholarship program at Bowling Green into the next decade. We anticipate this will impact more than 4,000 future students, students with financial need who may not have been able to attend college themselves, students who will experience all that BGSU has to offer, students who will graduate with minimal debt and a great degree, a great education, and who will go out and be our future leaders. But. With this, and it is a historic moment for Bowling Green, because you can do the math, but we have together, once again, earned the confidence of the university's most generous supporters through our student support and outcomes. But you know, we will all need to do our part, our part to educate these students, to support these students, to raise some matching funds, to prepare them for their life after Bowling Green State University. So in closing, you know, I'd like to acknowledge 
that a um, college degree is uh, certainly not for everyone. That's always the argument. Um, there are many paths to education, and I agree with that. There are many paths to life after a high school degree. But I want to also state that I would hate to think of a state or a nation where the option is not available to all, to all who wish to better themselves through higher education. We need higher education and we need Bowling Green State University. Why? Because what we do, what you do, is an essential good, a public good. And we need it now perhaps more than ever. We need more critical and, and creative thinkers, more innovators, a more engaged public for our economy, yes, but most importantly for our democracy. So the address is the state of our university. I haven't answered that question, have I? What is the state of our university? Well, the state of our university is strong. It is very strong indeed. But as we move forward, we will need each of you, each of us working together. And so my ask of you is to remember your why, our collective why. Always student first. We must commit to a growth mindset, really realizing that we may not have all the answers, but knowing there is absolutely something to learn, even from those who criticize, especially those who criticize. If we are not open to learning, open to improving, how can we ask others? How can we ask our students to do the same? And so I am so grateful and hopeful about our future because we have proven what is already possible. Every single person can make a difference in our success. Just think of that one coach going the extra mile for that one student. The stakes are simply too high to approach our work, our why, any other way. We will absolutely move our university forward. Thank you for all you do for our students and for Bowling Green State University, a public university for the public good. I, Ziggy Zumba.